Hello, I'm Kent Ishiguro. Today, I will present the problem of excessive PLE in VM agnostic KVM and mitigations. I'd like to introduce myself briefly. I'm a third year PhD student at Kyo University in Japan. My research interests are performance and security of hypervisors. Oversubscribing virtual CPUs is often used in cloud environments, as it enables better hardware utilization by multiplexing virtual CPUs on physical CPUs. However, oversubscription can incur excessive spinning and it degrades GSBM performance. For example, Lockholder preemption is one of the famous problems which incurs excessive spinning. Let's suppose an ordinary case of spin lock synchronization. Two physical CPUs need to acquire a spin lock. If CPU 0 has already acquired a spin lock, CPU 1 fails to acquire the lock and it will spin until CPU 0 releases the lock. After CPU 0 releases the lock, CPU 1 can acquire the lock and execute the critical section. Since physical CPUs are always active, the busy waiting is always short. The operating system assumes physical CPUs are always active and the spin lock synchronization works efficiently. However, in a virtual environment, the assumption is not always kept. If virtual CPU 0 is preempted by the hypervisor after it acquires a lock, virtual CPU 1 spins forever. This problem is called the lock holder preemption problem. Excessive vCPU spinning can degrade the performance of guest VM. Virtual CPUs waste their execution time by executing pause loop instructions for a long time. Ideally, the hypervisor would know which vCPU should be scheduled right now to avoid excessive vCPU spinning, like lock holder preemption. However, it is hard due to the semantic gap between KVM and Linux scheduler, or KVM and GIST VMs. Because of the semantic gap between KVM and the scheduler, boosting a target vCPU can be impeded by the Linux scheduler to keep fairness between vCPUs. The semantic gap between KVM and GIST VMs makes it hard to build a comprehensive vCPU candidate set for boosting. KVM leverages the hardware feature to mitigate excessive spinning on Intel x86. The hardware feature is called Pause Loop Exiting, PLE for short. PLE can detect excessive spinning and transfers the control to the hypervisor for rescheduling. The current KVM strategy to suppress PLE events is basically rescheduling a PLE vCPU to another preempted vCPU. This is performed with Linux scheduler by leveraging yield to function provided by Linux CFS scheduler. To yield and boost vCPUs, KVM makes a request to the Linux scheduler. Before making a request to the Linux scheduler, 
KVM selects a vCPU to boost in round robin from candidate vCPUs. This candidate is important to resolve the cause of PLE as soon as possible. Although KVM attempts to reschedule vCPUs where PLE event happens. In the worst case, a lot of PLE events occur in the short period of time. This is a KVM trace with running two 8 vCPU VMs simultaneously. VM exit occurs repeatedly due to pause instruction, which means PLE events occur continuously more than 100 times even though the VM has only 8 vCPU and they are boosted in land robin. These continuous PLE events occur in a short period of time. All PLE events in the threads occur at the same code location. In conclusion, in the worst case, PLE events occur continuously in the short period of time at the same code location. Continuous PLE events incur a large number of PLE events. This kind of phenomenon is not rare, and most PLE events are from continuous PLE events. So, rescheduling vCPUs does not work as well as we expected. The figure in the bottom shows the CDF of PLE occurrences on several benchmarks. In these experiments, two 8 vCPU VMs are running simultaneously on KVM. The benchmark we noted is running in one VM, and CPU bound benchmark, Swaptions, is running in the other VM. This figure shows more than 100 continuous PLE events is more than 20% of the total number of PLE events in these four benchmarks. The reasons for these PLE events are mainly two functions, native queued spin lock swappers and SMP call function many, which means both spin locks and the TLB shootdown are the cause of PLE events. I have identified several problems which incur a large number of continuous PLE events. First, lost opportunities and overboost, that were due to the lack of comprehensive approach to identify the root cause of PLE. I introduced the strict boost mitigation against these problems. The other problem is schedule mismatch which is due to the semantic gap between KVM and Linux scheduler. Linux scheduler ignores boost requests from hypervisors. This results in PLE vCPU is rescheduled repeatedly before scheduling a boosted vCPU. Then, continuous PLE events occur. I introduce the mitigation, the booster, against this problem. The rest of slides describe these problems and mitigations. The current KVM candidate vCPU selection for boost is developed as follows. The current version implements directed yield, uh, which leverages yield to function to yield the period vCPU and boost or target vCPU. The candidate selection has been enhanced with optimization against lockholder preemption. Less prioritizing less entry period vCPUs, boosting only preempted vCPUs, and boosting only vCPUs in kernel mode. Introducing these optimizations results in missing boost vCPUs that are the cause of period event due to TLB shutdown synchronization. Boosting hearted BCPUs 
where they receive an IPI alleviates the latency due to TLB synchronization. The experimental results and the candidate VCPU selection strategy give us three in insights. The first one is SpinLock still incurs continuous PoE events. The second one is VCPUs in user mode also need to act when TLB shutdown happens. And the third, no need to boost IPL receivers when local holder preemption happens. The first one is due to the scheduler mismatch problem, which is described later. Second one is called loss opportunity in this work. The third one is called overboost. To mitigate these problems, I introduce two new candidate selection rules. One is the boosting IPI receiver vCPUs in user mode. The other one is not boosting hearted vCPUs if the yielded vCPU has not sent an IPI to it. Next, I'll talk about the schedule mismatch problem. KVM cooperative with schedules with Linux scheduler. However, Linux scheduler does not distinguish between vCPUs and the other threads. Also, KVM makes requests to Linux CFS scheduler for boosting vCPU. Linux CFS scheduler always keeps fairness between vCPUs, which results in Linux scheduler ignoring the requests from KVM, eventually. Let's see the case study of scheduler mismatch problem. Suppose that KVM tries to yield VCPU0 and boost VCPU1. VCPU0 is waiting for VCPU1 to release a lock. In the Linux CFS RAN queue, VCPU0 is very high priority and VCPU1 is low priority. The scheduler picks the highest priority task, VCPU0. Then, if the CPU time of VCPU1 minus CPU time of VCPU0 is more than threshold, the scheduler decides not to yield VCPU0 and not to boost VCPU1 because the scheduler considers scheduling VCPU1 is too unfair. VCPU0 will trigger a PoE event again and again because VCPU1 still has a lock. VCPU0 consumes its CPU time for executing pause loop. Eventually, VCPU1 is boosted. After VCPU0 wastes its execution time with PoE repeatedly. I introduced the debooster mitigation against the scheduler mismatch problem. The booster makes the scheduler not hesitate to boost another vCPU instead of vCPU which exits due to PoE. By lowering PoE the vCPU priority. As a result, vCPU1 is boosted without wasting vCPU 0's CPU time. I have implemented these two mitigations in Linux KVM 5.6.0 by adding only 41 lines of code modification. The mitigations has, have been evaluated on an 8-core server with two VMs with 8 vCPUs each. 
mitigations can reduce the number of PLE events with four benchmarks. In terms of performance improvement, application execution time is reduced by up to 40%, and the throughput is improved by up to 75%. Also, I evaluated the fairness between VMs. This, uh, this result shows no co-runner's performance degradation because mitigations do not raise the priority of the boosted base CPU. In conclusion, oversubscribing vCPUs incurs excessive spinning. Pause loop exiting is a hardware feature against it. Unfortunately, PLE does not fix it due to the semantic gap between KBM and GSBMs or KVM and Linux schedule. Introduced mitigations improve application throughput by up to 75%. This problem is investigated by the KVM community. Please see links below. And please see our paper for more detailed experiments and analysis. Thank you for your attention.